Hi everybody! It's me Kelsey and we're back here in my Fruit of the Spirit garden doing kind of a recap of our last nine weeks. It's kind of crazy to think that we've done nine whole weeks together talking about how we can grow our roots into God so that we can grow with the Holy Spirit and grow these fruits in our lives. But we did it! So I'm pretty happy. Next week we'll put out the video of everybody saying the verse. Um, super excited to see some of you that actually did a hard thing and accomplished it and memorized Galatians 5, 22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. So you haven't seen much of my garden besides where I've been sitting each week, but it's a little bit bigger than you might have expected. So I thought I'd kind of give you a little tour this week as we talk about each of the last nine weeks. So the first thing that we talked about is love. And we said that God loved us and sent his son. God was the perfect, that was from 1 John 4.10. Um, God was the perfect example of love because he sent his son Jesus to earth as a baby to grow up and live and never make any mistakes and then die for our mistakes. And so we know that we can grow in love if we're connected to God and if we use the Holy Spirit's help to help us love one another. And that when we have the love of Christ in us, it bubbles over and overflows and other people can see it in us. So this is a little tiny tomato called an orange hat. If you look a little closer, you can see that it's teensy tiny. My hand's way taller, but it still has these little fruits. So even though it's small, it can still grow fruit. I think that's pretty true for all of us too. So come along here and see. You can see some of the fun things that I'm growing. This is kind of my little herb garden and some peppers. I've never been very good at growing peppers, but I try every year. I got a lot of peppers this year and then I think they got a little too wet, so they're not looking the happiest. But come on in here and see some of my favorite beans. Might be hard to see, but look at these. They're kind of purple and stripedy. They're called dragon tongue bush beans. And mostly I grow them because I think they're really cool. The next thing that we talked about is joy. And we talked about how joy comes from being rooted in God and being rooted in his love because when only when we are with Christ can we experience the fullness of joy. Um, when we talk about being rooted in Christ, come look at this. I think you'll think this is kind of interesting. So these are my strawberry plants. You can kind of see they grow little flowers that turn into buds. Tiny strawberry in there, they get bigger and bigger. Until they're ready to pick. Pretty tasty. I love strawberries, but look here. Strawberry plants send out these tiny little things called runners. Do you want to bring it in so you can see? These runners help the plant because it's like the Japanese beetles have been here and they kind of eat it so it looks lacy. The runners help the plant because they send them out from the main part and they send out these little things because they want to root into more good soil so they can grow stronger and bigger and better. So they send out these runners that then if it gets in the dirt it will root and grow a whole nother plant. So just like we need to be rooted in Christ to experience the fullness of joy, my strawberry plants are trying really hard to root just about everywhere else that they can send those runners. And they get pretty long. Come along with me. Here's some more herbs, some lettuces, things that we eat in salads, stuff that I can replant pretty quick and it grows nice. Um, we talked about peace then one week, and that was not a video week. That was uh, at home with your family week, which was kind of cool. And we talked about how, um, you know, peace kind of starts at home and in our families and treating those that we know well, well. Um, and then it can grow from there to with other people working towards peace. After that was patience. 
And when you are a gardener, you learn patience. See these squash? Here's a dead leaf. Here's a yellowed leaf. Lots of yellow leaves. But what you can't see is that after I realized that I had this powdery mildew on my squash, I started to work on it. I, t I will confess, I wasn't the most patient with these squash. I thought about picking them up and ripping them out and just dumping them in my compost bin over there. But I remembered how we talked about Noah. We did a character story, a character study on Noah for a hundred in 20 years built this huge boat that nobody understood and everybody thought was silly and then he spent a whole year with just his family and nobody else on the boat while the earth was flooded noah was a patient person and so i decided i was going to be patient with these what you can't quite see is that this squash trails down to the other side and all the new leaves are bright green and very very healthy but really when you're a gardener or when you're growing any sort of thing, you have to pay attention to it because there's all sorts of things that can come in and kind of ruin your hard work. You know, you work for months to get the ground ready, to get the fences built, to get the trellis built. And then if you're not paying close attention or if you just decide you're a little too tired or you're a little too lazy and you don't come out, bad things can happen. See what happened to my squash over here. I decided for the first time ever to plant some squash in the ground, but you can barely see it, huh? Here, I'll point with my foot. There's a squash plant there. You can see it's big leaves covered in weeds. And here's one over here that is not. Even we, as we try and grow the fruits of the Spirit in our lives, even though we have the Holy Spirit's help, we still need to always be vigilant and still be watching and taking care to make sure that other things aren't coming in and ruining the things that we're growing. Things like jealousy or anger or um, pride. Different things that can really hurt the fruit that we're already growing and even take it out like this powdery mildew almost did but I caught it in time or these weeds which I'll be dealing with tonight. I just wanted to show you what can happen if you don't spend enough time working on growing your fruits. So then, the next thing that we talked about after love, joy, peace, and patience was kindness. So come on over, look at my squash trellis. There's a funny thing that people say about gardeners. They say that once you get into the growing season, that these kind of squashes, do you wanna come see them? These kind of squashes that I've got growing, or zucchini squashes, look. They're really long, they're growing from the top here. But you just get so many of them that all you want to do is take your squash and bring it to your friend's house and just leave it on the step in the middle of the night and not even tell them. Because you get so many squashes, you have nothing else to do but to share with others. And so we talked about kindness, and in Philippians 2 4, it says, Let each of you look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. And Kindness has the power, we said, to soften people's hearts towards God and God's love. And so just like I'll be sending out some of these squash to some of my friends, have your parents send me a message if you'd like one this year, I'll happily bring it over because I've got a ton. We too can do things that are kind to other people that will soften their hearts towards God. So it's not just that side, it's the other side and a whole other patch. but. We can be kind to others, and in that kindness, they can see God's love. Something funny that kind of happened this year, I don't know if you can see it. Normally I have just a bunch of daylilies back here, but do you see all, all of these big vines? They're huge. There's got to be about seven. My neighbor in the backyard expanded their garden this year too, just like I did. Some of their vines have grown through the fence, and we're just going to keep helping them grow and encourage them to grow because when we are growing our gardens and we're growing our fruits of the Spirit in God, we can also encourage other people, maybe friends, parents, family members, teachers, um, other families you know from church, we can encourage them to grow in their fruits of the Spirit too 
by modeling what we're doing, by encouraging them to say, hey, you're doing a really good job. I love how patient you were when your friend was upset and you really wanted that toy. Or we can say, wow, you know what? I can see just the love of God in you and it's just bubbling over and your whole, your whole self just shows God really well. So yeah, vines all along my fence, but I can just encourage those to keep them growing. And here's the garden, what we've kind of been talking about the whole time. When we started, it was bare dirt with a couple of seeds. Now we've got huge things, weeds, my peas. Peas don't like when the weather gets above 90 degrees, so there's a, those are dying out. I was just letting some seeds dry to save them for next year. Um, and I'll pull those out probably this week. Um, but chard and carrots, let me go grab some stuff for you. So we talked about how kindness is things that you kind of do on the outside, but goodness is more about what's on the inside. And remember when I had the two little cups of sugar and of salt? <laughs> I don't even like to think about it. It was terrible. But sometimes things all look the same. You don't know, you just don't know which one is good until you know what's on the inside. And how do we become good? We become good by focusing our thoughts and our lives on the things that God says is good. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So we become good and we foster that goodness in our lives by thinking about these things that God tells us to think about and focus on. Let's see if I can pull a carrot for you here. This one's a yellow one. I'll see if I can find an orange one. Oh, got a couple. Carrots start as the absolute teeniest, tiniest seeds. And if you don't thin them out, you get teeny tiny ones like this. But these are gonna be a good snack for after we're done tonight. I'm just gonna toss them over there. Um, something that I really love growing, that I'm sure you might notice is actually taller than me right now, tomatoes. I love tomatoes. Don't really like tomatoes from the store, but I love homegrown tomatoes. Let me go grab one. Couldn't help it. But tomatoes are kind of interesting because you have to be pretty careful if you want to grow tomatoes from seed when they're little because you don't really want to just wait until the ground is ready and pop a few seeds in because while you'll get a few tomatoes, you're not going to get all the tomatoes that you could get if you start early and if you are caring faithfully for those tomatoes because first you start the seeds. You have them on a heat mat and then they start growing and then you need light and then you need a fan to kind of move their little tiny stalks back and forth so they get strong. We talked about the faithfulness of Barnabas. Um, remember Barnabas was part of the early church. He was good friends with Paul um, and he listened to God and he followed God even when he and Paul disagreed all tomatoes. So even when he and Paul disagreed, he was faithful and he was loyal and he was committed to God. Because faithfulness is being loyal and committed. And we can grow in our fruit of the spirit of faithfulness by being loyal and committed to Christ, even when other people might disagree with us or say, well, we don't believe that. Why do you believe that? We can still stay committed to Christ. Um, then one of the last two things is gentleness. And we talked about the Psalm 23 where we see God as the good shepherd and gentleness as being controlled strength. It's not being shy or meek or mild-mannered. Gentleness is very strong. It's a strong thing, but it's a controlled strength. Just like the shepherd 
would guide the sheep along the path of the Wadi Kent, um, we can also be gentle in talking with other people and teaching them about Christ and in just our everyday dealings with our family. We can be gentle even when we have a ton of emotions, when we have really big feelings. And take a deep breath and be gentle to them. The squirrel just went running around the fence. I hope you saw that. They run by a lot out here sometimes. Another one went up on the power line. Sometimes they even eat my tomatoes and that does not make me happy. So the last thing that we talked about was the last fruit of the Spirit as written in Galatians chapter 5, which was self-control. And we talked about self-control is really us controlling our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. And that we can show other people the way to God by controlling our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions. Um, and we can do that by kind of hearkening back to that Philippians 4, 8, finally brothers, whatever is, you know, true, honorable, just, um, pure, lovely, commendable. If anything is excellent or if anything is praiseworthy, think about such, think about these things. We can focus our thoughts on the good things of God and thinking about God changes our feelings and our feelings change our actions. And so we can become more self-controlled just by spending more time with God. And honestly, if there was going to be one overarching theme of our whole last nine weeks where we talked about the fruits of the Spirit, it would be that plants can't live without roots. We are never going to develop our fruits of the Spirit unless we are firmly rooted in our foundation, which is Christ. The closer we are to God, the better we grow. We have the Holy Spirit to help us and we can do it, but you have got to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind because then these things will grow in your life. Other people will see them and we will show others the light of Jesus Christ. So in this next week, as you're going about your day, remember we talked about tag time, time alone with God. Maybe do a little tag time, have some time alone with God and just spend time praying and read your Bible or listen to the Jesus is Better podcast that I recommended and just get that good time in with God that helps you grow your roots and then grow your fruits. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for these children, God. I thank you for um, the way our paths have crossed. Some of them I've had in class. Some of them I've never met before but I feel like I love them because you are helping give me the words to speak to them God I just pray that in this week that they renew their focus on you their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that they spend time with you and that you help them grow their roots so that they can grow their fruit help us love you more every day in Jesus name amen see you guys next week